Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So an interesting find, this giant grain scale, uh, it is a balanced Toledo scale. I actually found this in a dumpster and it is extremely heavy. This item here weighs over 70 pounds and it is 100% scrappable, loaded with cast aluminum shell, some stainless steel. There is actually even some gold in here as well as some nice circuit boards. So very easy to take apart. This is actually something I don't find often. I have found a few scales, but this will be in my little series called Crazy Finds While Scrapping. So gonna take it apart for you right now. Uh, for the sake of this video and time, there are three different components and I have had to use a grinder on a piece of this just to get a few stubborn corroded bolts out. So gonna start here, I take this off right here. Gonna start with the scale part, the plate here. This is actually, if I put a magnet to it, you can see non-magnetic. So this is either gonna be good stainless steel or aluminum. A lot of times when people are scrapping, they look at the metallic look. It's not magnetic. And those are the two options usually they have. If they scratched it, it could be coated brass, but easy way to tell. Scratch it, there's a gold underneath, it's brass. But this right here, easy way to tell the difference between aluminum and stainless steel. I have my grinder set up. If I hit this with a grinding disc and it sparks, it's gonna be non-magnetic stainless steel. And going right now for 77 cents a pound in London, Ontario. If it does not spark, it's going to be aluminum. And this would be uh, clean aluminum right now, 45 cents a pound. So hoping it's stainless steel. I already know what it is because I've done this for a while. But just going to show my beginners here the spark test. So you can see non-magnetic stainless steel. A lot of your barbecues, that is a simple trick to test if it is just gonna be thrown right into your tin or good stainless steel. So this is very heavy and I will, for the sake of this video, put final weights at the bottom of my video, uh, break down uh, total price weight for this scrap. So again, beautiful stainless steel. Here, right here, I have already removed the bolts. This top here, is actually plastic. This is a heavy plastic. I'm gonna actually just throw this right into my uh, recycling uh, because this is the main item right here. This shell is cast aluminum. Uh, and right now, cast aluminum, all time high price in London, Ontario. It is actually 80 cents a pound Canadian. I just checked uh, just a couple days after New Year's. It was actually 75 cents, so it's gone up five cents more. So excellent item to be bringing in right now, cast aluminum. Uh, there are definitely different prices. You are gonna get a lot less at certain ones, but the one I go to in London, 80 cents a pound, can't beat that. Uh, so again, this is plastic, thick enough. I can throw it into my recycling. Some of my viewers, especially out east, say that they actually get uh, money for plastic. Uh, at the scrapyard. Unfortunately, here in southwestern Ontario, we don't have that recycling incentive at the scrapyard, but I can recycle it, so that's good. It's not going into the landfill. And this is a heavy chunk of plastic. Inside here, just gonna quickly turn this up, show you with my magnet, a lot of non-magnetic material. There is some magnetic attraction, so these pieces are gonna be steel, as well as the top there. So I do have to remove those. But this whole casing is attached with just screws, but this is all going to be cast aluminum pieces. Um, I have had people ask me what is the difference between, for example, zinc cast and cast aluminum. This, I can tell it's cast aluminum because zinc cast, a lot of your motor outer um, casings, those are zinc cast. If you turn them around, they look like they have sort of a rainbow effect. Uh, like a drop of oil in water. These do not have that. This is a nice thick piece of cast aluminum. And there is a lot of wire in here that you see uh, at the top. This is just a brass plug, lots of brass in here. I can't pull that out because of the heavy plastic, but I will put this once I remove these screws, this brass prong, I'm gonna have a bag set up. I'm gonna get 19 cents a pound for this, um, but a lot of wire. And there is right back here a beautiful transformer that I want to get as well. So just going to start removing items here. Again, put a magnet to it. This is going to be going into my uh, uh, tin pile. 
Uh, the reason I classify this as tin is because at a scrapyard you have tin shred or tin. The item, in order to be steel, has to be thicker than a quarter inch. So this is not thicker than a quarter inch. The bolts, however, that I see here are thicker, but because I only have a little bit of steel at times, I'm just going to throw it all into my tin pile. Um, but just getting these bolts out because I want that transformer. Uh, there is a little bit of, I guess, as I said, screws in here that I have to take off. This wire, I am going to just cut a little bit just to show you. Again, lots of different wire that's going right up to this uh, scale. But uh, example of this stuff, uh, I am going to just quickly pull it out. Again, I will put final breakdowns, um, but again, just getting some of this. This is going to be right here, some good wire, but you do have to be careful. It is very thin. Um, you're going to want to throw this into your 40% uh, appliance wire uh, because it has, again, very little wire, uh, very little copper recovery, very flimsy. So again, this is going to be your 40% appliance wire at some scrap yards. Still a good price, giving you right now $1.45 a pound. Um, the problem is I can't put this into my higher grade because of the thickness, but also because of this uh, brass plug end. These brass plug ends, I'm going to get downgraded because of the extent of plastic there. So I could try putting this into my 60% by just removing the wire. Uh, but again, because this is very flimsy, they are going to reject this. So I do have a separate bag where I put little stuff like this. I usually get low gauge or um, low uh, copper recovery wire, usually about 25 to 30 cents a pound. So not bad, still better than nothing. But these prongs, if I was to cut these prongs off and bring them in as is, I can, as mentioned, get 19 cents a pound for this. Um, so that too is better than nothing. Uh, all of your prongs that you have have the plastic coating on them. You can bring those in uh, for the 19 cents a pound. And I am currently doing an experiment to see if it is worth uh, removing them or leaving them on. But just gonna quickly take the last one off here. Okay, there are, as I mentioned, a couple different components in here, lots of wire. And there is thicker wire that I see here. This wire, this stuff I can throw into my 60%. It is thicker. You can see the copper inside of there. But again, I do have to remove the plastic uh, brass plug ends there to get that upgrade. So that will be in my 60%. This will be in my brass recovery, 19 cents. Um, so you do want to make sure you check. But scrap yards are getting more picky when they are looking at your appliance wire because of the difference in price. Uh, so again, some more tin there right there is that brass there just screwed on there. I can remove it uh, as mentioned, but a lot of nice wire in there. This transformer, just gonna try. I have already removed one of the screws. I've already opened this up ahead of time just to be on the up speed it up but here's a small little circuit board look at these little capacitors you have on here these capacitors do have an aluminum case on them but I leave these on here uh, I do not actually get anything for these there is no separate category at the scrap yards I go to for these um, capacitors they say leave them on um, they give me about five cents a pound for this as e-waste these, there are bigger ones, and you can have them like microwaves and stuff about this big or cylindrical, maybe three cents a pound. Some people actually will open these and remove the aluminum casing for that aluminum. Uh, very messy, and I do have a separate video uh, showing you if it is worth opening capacitors or not, and also if you're interested, what's inside. So I'll, I will include the link to that video in my description, but this circuit board, gonna be e-waste, uh, but this transformer, as well as here, this control panel here is going to have a few uh, silver contacts. I can see them right there. So right where my finger's pointing, once I break that open, those are all going to have small little metallic dots. And just going to show you one for the camera. So putting that up, you can see that dot there. There is a small smudge on that. That is actually silver. So these are silver contact boxes or silver contacts. Um, I do break those off, have a nice little vial for that silver recovery, 
But the transformer here is an older one that you can see, but once I break this open, this is gonna have really nice number two copper inside. And currently number two copper going for $4.30 a pound. So it is our scrapper's gold. Uh, and they are worth opening. The rest of this shell I am gonna get tin price for. Um, if I was to leave this, just bring it in as a transformer, because there is the copper inside, I'm gonna get about 25 to 30 cents a pound for it. So well worth opening, getting that pound and a half of copper. Um, the shell here is right here. This is actually aluminum. So the only reason there is metallic or magnetic attraction is because of these screws. But the rest of this, you can see non-magnetic. So this is a great piece here. Uh, and the rest of this, just going to, just to show you inside the whole shell. This shell, again, as said, cast aluminum. Once I remove the screws, you do want to make sure you remove these magnetic uh, pieces here because you are going to get downgraded tremendously. Dirty cast only going for about 10 to 15 cents a pound. So they are just held on with screws. There might be a few spots like here where it connects that I do have to cut with the grinder. But the wire here, this wire, just going to show you the bottom, does have the beautiful appliance wire. So this appliance wire, really thick. You can see the plug there. Just going to cut this. And there are a few that are going right from the base all the way to the control box here, the buttons. So just going to show you this. If I was to look at that inside, this is your example of your 40% appliance wire. It has the outer coating of plastic, three individual strands of coated copper. So again, 40%, a dollar 45 a pound for this. And this is a nice weight for sure. I know when I combine this one and these uh, two that are on the bottom here, I'm gonna have over a pound and a half. As well, on the top here, there are some brass prongs. I do remove those, put them into my brass. Currently brass, $3.15 a pound Canadian, so I remove them. I have a nice big bucket that is uh, storing them up, getting weight for them. Some people do leave them on for the weight, but it is entirely up to you and your scrapper's uh, uh, techniques. Uh, but again, I take them off. Uh, again, the wire going to the control box here, the buttons, I have already removed it because it was stubborn. I had to hit it with a grinder. But what's interesting about this, so just gonna cut a little bit of this wire here. This is very thick. I don't even know if I'm gonna get my um, whole wire cutter, side cutter around it, but just gonna show you. Inside, again, there is some beautiful wire there. Again, gonna be 40%. It has a few buttons that you see here, the on and off switch, the uh, prep. There is, as right there, a couple brass prongs that you see on there. These are my examples, as I was mentioning, about my coated brass prongs. Just gonna pull one off for this video to show you. But this right here, another example, these are what you're gonna find all the time connected to circuit boards. And if I was to bring this in with the plastic on it, gonna get that 19 cents a pound. But something like this, very easy with a pair of side cutters, just breaking that plastic. Uh, sometimes they are more rubber, but um, that's all you have to do to get it. There is, as I said, just a little breakage, okay? But unfortunately for me, this one is a little bit tricky and I think it's probably <laughs> my hands, as you can see the mist coming off of my um, breath there. It is cold in here. So unfortunately it is harder to do when it is cold, but look at that, there it is, it's coming off. So just gonna feed that through. Uh, this one obviously is slower than I wanted it to be, but there are a lot that are actually a lot quicker than that, but there it is, just feeding that, gonna feed that right through the plastic, break it off, and gonna throw it again into my brass. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, this is a good blooper video to show you right here that this is longer. Some of you are gonna comment, say, wow, that took a long time, it's not worth it. But trust me, there are a lot of them that come go a lot quicker, and again, upgrading simple technique. The last thing on here that I wanted to show inside this control panel is just connected with one more little screw. But what's interesting about this circuit board is once I pull it out, if I can pull it out, it is on an angle. There are some bolts, last bolt to connect or unconnect, disconnect. There we go. Pull that off. 
And I think I'm just actually, for the speed of this, just going to hit this, pull it up. It is connected, as mentioned. Unfortunately, big screws that are connecting it. And it is on an angle, so it is making it more tricky. But it is falling out, and I do need a bigger pry bar. Where is my pry bar? Probably under this stuff. There it is. And my glasses are fogging up pretty good. So this is not going how I expected it to go, but hey, that's all right. Look at that beautiful gold. Those are gold-plated prongs on there. Again, this is on the buttons. Some of these are gonna have uh, top brass inside of them. All of these, I'm gonna break these open later. I will hold this off to the side because uh, I will show another video on circuit boards. But again, some of your circuit boards, gold-plated prongs there. I will remove these. I have a vial of gold. Uh, if I was to bring this in, some scrap yards will pay you, depending on the precious metals on circuit boards, uh, high grade, medium grade, low grade. Unfortunately, the one I go to in Sarnia only gives five cents a pound. So I am gonna take off items like this, as well as copper pieces, uh, um, aluminum heat sinks, because I am gonna upgrade there uh, by separating them instead of bringing it in as e-waste. The nice thing is, is, once I do remove the goodies though, I can still bring the rest of this circuit board in. Uh, but I do want to break these open. Eventually, there is any time of clicking you have, uh, going to be a little bit of silver. Uh, but just going to actually see if I can do it quickly. Pull one up just to break it. There we go. Break the plastic. Okay, so again, inside of there, you can see there is the button. There is a small little trace of silver. And in my opinion, these are actually not worth taking out of silver. Very, very small amount of silver. Uh, any type of your washing machines or appliances that have the push clicky um, pad, those have the small little dots of silver. And again, for me, very little uh, silver recovery. So I am only gonna go after this gold and then I will put the rest of this in my e-waste. The casing for that is another piece of this is cast aluminum. I do have to remove the bolts in there that you see because again, those are gonna be ma magnetic and it's gonna give me low grade. Uh, the plate here as well, this is clean aluminum too. I do have to remove those bolts. They are pretty corroded on there, but that is another piece of aluminum. The rest of this is gonna be just uh, garbage, but again, all of that inside, that's metal as well. And the last thing I have here is the scale. This actually has very little to it, but you can see it is all magnetic. So again, some really nice tin again. Inside of it, I have already gone ahead and opened the back panel. Here it is right there. Again, this too is magnetic. And this does have a lot of seed inside that you can see there. So this was definitely at a granary. Um, hopefully when I opened this, I was really, really thankful there was no mice hidden inside. But I'm just going to pull out the circuit board here to show you. Um, very, very simple circuit board, but uh, it is a good one. There are one, there it is, one last bolt I have to get off. Make sure you look before you pull, but I want to just pull out this circuit board here. If I can get to that bolt, there we go. Screw it off. Sometimes they are fused on there pretty good. Okay, but yeah, I'm just gonna pull it out this way. So connectors, there's a couple connectors to this. There it is. So nice little piece right here. I did get jabbed. I know I'm gonna have someone say, why don't you have PPE on? Again, I'm just too cold to think, I guess. <laughs> but there is a nice circuit board that you see here. This circuit board has tons of different IC chips on it. These IC chips, some micro scrappers will pull these off and sell them separately as IC chips. Some people will leave these on as a circuit board. Here right here is a nice relay box. So just gonna quickly move that. No, I'm sorry, it's not. It is a capacitor. Uh, easy way to tell underneath. You can see there is plastic there. Uh, any of these that have like a hard plastic instead of this kind of like um, glueish style are relay boxes. This one is a capacitor, so I'm going to leave it on. But 
This here, nice little aluminum heat sink, and you can see right in the angle there, these two prongs that hold this aluminum heat sink. There is a small dab, those brown edges there. That is copper. So these little prongs that you see on this heat sink, I'm gonna get a uh, number two copper price for. I have had some of my viewers say that they have actually had them rejected at their scrapyard because they say there's too much plastic on it. Um, given the price of copper, you will find a buyer. So if they say no, don't settle on just them. Call around. I have had other people say don't even put them in copper. Save them up for precious metals because there is precious metal inside of there as well. So it is up to you. But I do have a huge 10-gallon bucket that is quickly filling up. I find them on all different circuit boards. And sometimes they're not even connected to heat sinks. They're just in the middle. Um, I do separate the ones that are full plastic compared to the ones that have the copper style on top. Or some of them just have a, me a metallic look on top. Once you scratch it, you'll see that it is copper. This piece here, another piece of aluminum, painted aluminum, but again, 45 cents a pound for this. But the reason I also wanted to show this is nice crystal oscillator, very large. These people do pull off as well for micro scrapping, a little bit of silver recovery in this, as well as looking around, I don't see any MLCCs, but uh, again, a lot of IC chips, a few different boxes. Again, these are all little capacitors. You can see that tape or plastic or glue on top. That is to tell you it's capacitor. So leave those on. Uh, and again, some more e-waste. The rest of this, there is right here, another transformer. Last thing I'm gonna show to get to, again, just held in with a few screws, but another nice transformer in here. Gonna be interesting to see how much copper recovery I get. But, you know, this is pretty amazing just finding these different things in the trash, <laughs> what people are discarding. Uh, and again, that little prong got me right on the edge. So that is why this is, my finger looks like it's bleeding more than it is. Um, but again, sometimes that happens. All right, there it is. Where's my last connection? couple connectors oh on the bottom sorry there on the bottom there is a couple screws that I'm gonna have to get to but first I'm gonna have to remove this plate so just gonna show you because I'm gonna need a little bit of time to get to it uh, wow this is a lot of bloopers today uh, I think I'm going a little too fast but sometimes that's the way it works all right, there is my transformer, a lot of wire. Again, you wanna get all of that wire, again, some more appliance wire here, a little bit of wire inside. Here is a ceramic capacitor you see. I do take these off, put them into a, a container. There is a little bit of silver recovery in this. The rest of this is gonna be tin. And lastly, as mentioned, there is another transformer, just has a few screws on it, and that too is gonna have a lot of nice copper inside. So the rest of this frame here, gonna throw right into my tin, gonna get the ten, eight to 10 cents a pound for this, gonna cut off the rest of the wire here, throw this wire into my uh, 60 or 40%. I will again look at these, there is some brass for sure in these prongs. These ones I don't open up, I just leave as such. But again, really nice article here. As mentioned, 67 pounds of cast aluminum, tin, two transformers, some gold, uh, and pretty easy to actually take apart. So again, a little bit of appliance wire as well. Uh, sorry that one didn't go as planned, unscripted. I don't come across a lot of these. Um, it is, as mentioned, about minus 16 in the garage here. So again, my hands, I think, are working uh, they're a little bit numb, a little bit uh, slower than my brain. But again, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, interesting item just to show you never know what you're going to find. Uh, but scrap is everywhere and anywhere. And I am very glad to have been able to fish this out of the trash, scrap it, and divert it from the landfill. So hope you enjoyed that. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.